in this module of process control and instrumentation, we will now learn about instrumentation. Specifically, we will discuss about measuring instruments or sensors that are used in process industry to measure common process variables such as temperature, pressure, flow rate, upper fluid or liquid level. Science of measurement is very old and well advanced now. So it is perhaps not possible to teach you every details of all the instruments that are available. And perhaps it is not required also. But the purpose of this course or, or uh, the purpose of the module of this course is to give you a basic introduction to the instruments that are used in industry for measurements of common process variables for process monitoring, process control and safe profitable operation. Okay. So as I will talk about the instrumentation part of process control and instrumentation. You are now familiar with this block diagram which is a feedback control system, block diagram for feedback control system. Process control has been the topic of discussion so far, so you can recognize very well all the blocks of this block diagram. What we intend to do here is, you have a process which is influenced by some disturbance which you cannot manipulate. The process is also influenced by flow of energy and or material which we can manipulate. We want to control the process, meaning we define a desired state for the process and the control variable has to be kept at that desired state. So how does this feedback control work? The first thing that is done is we need to measure the control variable and we do that using a sensor or measuring element. So the sensor or measuring element measures information about the control variable and the information goes to controller where this value is compared with the desired value of the control variable that is set point and then er error signal generated. Depending on this error signal, the controller decides what action to be taken so that this control variable is driven to the desired value of control variable. So controller takes this decision and directs final control element to manipulate this input energy and or material which you can manipulate such that the control variable is driven to the desired state. You can write a, you can write a, uh, such a block diagram for any control system uh, uh, such that you can think of the control of temperature in this water bath by manipulating the flow rate of the steam. So you measure the bath temperature, the information goes to the controller and the controller decides what should be the opening of the control valve. Similarly, you can also talk about the level control in this tank where you use a level indicator which is nothing but a level measuring instrument which measures the level of the liquid, determines whether it is a desired state or not, the information goes to controller, the controller decides what is to be done and accordingly changes the opening of this valve. So you see that every control, every feedback control system will have at least one measuring sensor or measuring instrument. Feedback control system is widely used for control of temperature, pressures, flow rates, liquid levels in process industry. So it is of utmost importance that you learn about this sensor or the measuring elements.
So, this is the objective of the module. We, we intend to learn the fundamentals of industrial instrumentation. As, we, as I told you in the beginning that it is perhaps not possible to learn every details of all the instruments that are available because there are numerous instruments for measurement of various process variables. So, what we will do is we will learn general principles of measurement systems. This will be done without any reference to any specific hardware. Then we will talk about transducer elements. Transducer elements are those elements which changes the energy from one form to another. Let us say a pressure signal is converted to an electrical signal, a displacement signal is converted to an electrical signal. So, transducer elements are useful in uh, process instrumentation. Although by definition transducer elements are those elements which converts the energy from one form to another, typically by transducer we mean those elements which converts the energy in one form to an electrical signal. Then specialized measurement systems that will be the body of this course. We will learn about various pressure measuring instruments, various temperature measuring instruments, various flow measuring instruments and various level measuring instruments. And finally, the control valve and instrumentation diagram. So, towards the end of this course, we will be able to answer the following questions. What are sensors and transducers? What are the building blocks of an instrument? That means, can I break down an instrument into various building blocks and describe the operation of an instrument? What instrument characteristics affect the quality of measurement? What do we get and how do we get an estimate of error in our measurement? Since every measurement is in error, we should be able to get an estimate of how much of error is there in my measurement. How do you measure temperature? How do you measure pressure? How do you measure very low pressure or high vacuum? How do you measure flow rate of a fluid, say in a process? flow rate of a process fluid in a pipe. How do you measure liquid level? Let us say how do you measure liquid level in a storage tank? How do you interpret an instrumentation diagram? What, what, are the sim, what are the meaning of the symbols that are present in an instrumentation diagram? So, towards the end of this course, we should be able to answer these questions. Here is the details of model, module contents is divided into four parts. In part A, we talk about general principles of measurement systems. We will start with an introduction to measurement system and today we will discuss that. We will talk about what do you mean by measurement, why should you measure, what is the purpose of measurement, what is direct measurement, what is indirect measurement what are the various types of applications of measurement. Then we will talk about functional elements of an instrument. This is an important concept which, which helps us to describe the operation of instrument in a very generalized manner. So, we will try to break down an instrument into various functional elements and try to see how the instrument works. Then classification of instruments, the instruments can be classified in various ways. So, we will see some of the some of the ways how we classify the instruments. We will talk about input output configurations of instruments. Then we will go to performance characteristics of instruments. What are the various performance characteristics that affect the quality of measurement? Broadly, we will talk about two different types of characteristics. One is called static characteristics, another is dynamic characteristics. As the name suggests, static characteristics are those characteristics which we must consider 
when the instrument is being used to measure the value of a condition which is not changing with time. And dynamic characteristics as the name suggests are those characteristics which we must consider when the instrument is being used to measure a condition which is changing with time. Then we will end part A with a brief discussion on error analysis. Since every measurements are in error, we should have an estimate of error in our measurements. In part B, we will talk about transducer elements. Tra we just discussed that transducers, transducer elements are those elements which converts energy in one form to another and practically we mean those elements which converts energy in one form to electrical energy. We will talk about four different types of transducer elements, a linear variable differential transformer or LVDT which is a displacement type trans displacement transducer, it converts displacement signal to an electrical signal. Then resistance strain gauges, resistance strain gauge if strained it resistance changes. So, it converts the strain to an electrical signal. Capacitive type displacement, capacitive type transducer which is again a displacement type transducer and piezoelectric transducers which is like if a crystalline material like quartz is distorted, a charge is produced. So, we will talk about piezoelectric transducers in detail also. Part C will be the main body of this module. Here, we will talk about various process variable measuring instruments in detail. We will start with various spacer measuring instruments. We will see how we classify the various spacer measuring instruments. What are the various spacer measuring instruments available? What are their working principle? What are the ranges of these instruments? And so on and so forth. Similarly, we will treat various temperature measuring instruments, various flow measuring instruments and various level measuring instruments. Mainly, we will focus on liquid level measuring instruments. Then in part D, we will talk about control valve and instrumentation diagram. The contents will be the construction and working principle of a control valve, how does a control valve work. Then we will see what we mean by an instrumentation diagram, what is it, what are the symbols used in an instrumentation diagram, how do we interpret an instrumentation diagram. This is the list of textbooks or reference books. Number one, measurement system application and design by Doyle. Number two, process control instrumentation technology by Johnson. Number three, Principles of Industrial Instrumentation by Patronovich. Number 4, Industrial Instrumentation by Ekman. And finally, Process Industrial Instruments and Controls Handbook by Considine. So, let us start part A with the definition of measurement. Measurement is an essential activity in every branch of science and technology. Measurement means quantification of a parameter. 
or quantification of a quantity or condition. A measuring instrument is thus a device that determines the value of a quantity or condition. An instrument converts a physical or chemical plant condition, for example, heat, pressure or light to a signal which is often electrical but not necessarily so that can be measured or interpreted. So, a simple instrument model may be as follows. You have a process or measured medium. Let us say you are interested in measuring the temperature of a liquid in a tank. So, this is the process or measured medium for you. Then I take a temperature measuring instrument. This temperature measuring instrument interacts with this process and produces an output which is in some sense related to this input and this output should be in a form which can which can be interpreted by the observer. So, why should we measure? What is the purpose of measurement? Lord Kelvin said, when you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it, but when you cannot measure it, when you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is of a meager and unsatisfactory kind within quote and unquote. That defines the purpose of instrument, instru the purpose of measurement very nicely. In a process industry, if you visit, if when you work for a process industry, you perhaps will frequently ask or will want to know what is the temperature in the reactor, what is the temperature in the furnace or in the reboiler, what is the flow rate of a process fluid in a pipe or what is the level of liquid in the storage tank or what is the concentration of a product in the product stream. So, to get an answer to these questions, we definitely need to take help of various instruments. So, the fundamental purpose of measurements in industrial manufacturing and processing is to obtain a numerical value because generally we are interested in quantification corresponding to the variable being measured so that we can determine and improve the quality of a product or the efficiency of production. The fundamental purpose of measurements in industrial manufacturing and processing is to obtain a numerical value corresponding to the variable being measured so that we can determine and improve the quality of a product or the efficiency of production. By efficiency of production we mean the process operations should be profitable and safe for human, environment as well as equipment. Now, let us come to types of measurement applications. The measurements can be done for various reasons. We have various process variables to measure. We have various instruments to measure those variables. So, there can be various types of measurements. There can be various types of measurement applications. Fortunately, the application of any measurement can usually be put into any of the following three categories. A, monitoring of process operations, B, control of processes and operations and 3, experimental engineering analysis. 
What do you mean by monitoring of processes and operation? By monitoring of process and operation, we mean the instrument simply measures and display what it has measured. Usually, control action is not taken. So it basically keeps track of some quantity or condition. For example, let us talk about weather monitoring, thermometers, barometers, radars simply indicate weather condition. It does not take any control action. So th thermometers, barometers, radars, they all indicate the weather condition and the weather condition can be monitored that way. A homely example is a water meter or electric meter which keeps track of how much of water or how much of electricity has been used. So, monitoring of process and operations where the instrument simply measures and display what it has measured. It is essentially for keeping track of some quantity or condition and usually no control action is taken. A homely example is water meter or electric meter which tells us how much of water or electricity is used. Two, control of processes and operations. Perhaps it is the most important applications of measurements and we basically refer to automatic control. We have briefly talked about a feedback control system in the beginning of today's discussion and also it has been the topic of discussion so far. So, you know that every feedback control system has at least one measuring instrument involved and this is, a, this is definitely one of the most important application of measurements. And number three, experimental engineering analysis. We can measure variables or some quantity or condition to test the validity of predictions from theories. We can perform measurements to develop model from raw data that we collect using instruments. We can also perform carry out measurements for characterization of materials, devices, etc. So, application of any measurement can generally be put into one of these three categories. Process monitoring and operations where instruments simply measures and display, no control action is taken. Number two, control of processes and operations where control action is actually taken and the control in a feedback control system control action has to be taken on the basis of the measurement of the control variable and number three is for experimental engineering analysis when you use it for testing the validity of predictions from theories or you build up a model using the data that you collect using instruments. The measurements can be broadly classified into two categories, direct measurement and indirect measurement. Direct measurements, what do you mean by direct measurements? In direct measurements, we compare directly the parameter that we intend to measure with an accepted standard. For example, measuring the length of a wooden block by a scale. If I have an 
accepted standard accepted standard i can directly measure the length of a wooden block using that accepted standard for example you measure the length of this classroom using a tape which can be considered as an accepted standard indirect measurement as the name suggests we measure a parameter by measuring another parameter which is more convenient to measure so essentially we infer here we don't measure directly the parameter that we intend to measure but we measure some other parameter which is more convenient to measure and infer the value of the other parameter let's take an example to clarify this i have a task at hand find out how many bacteria are there in a tube so you have a tube and there are some bacteria in the tube i want to find out how many bacteria are present in the tube what can be the direct measurement here a direct measurement can be you spread the bacteria out on a microscope slide and directly count under the microscope so you take a microscope slide spread out the bacteria put it under microscope and count it that will that will be of course a direct measurement but you understand is going to be very inconvenient and cumbersome so what can be indirect measurement use a spectrophotometer use an instrument called spectrophotometer a spectrophotometer works by shining light in one side of a tube and measuring how much of light passes through passes through to the other side if more light passes it means that there is less bacteria in the tube so you can back calculate and can measure how many bacteria are present in the test tube there can be another way of measuring the bacteria count indirectly we give some substrate or food to the bacteria to eat and grow so the bacteria will consume the substrate and grow and let's measure this consumption rate higher the consumption rate higher the bacteria count so this will be another way of measuring the bacteria count indirectly of course the direct measurement is always preferred but as you notice here that it is not always possible to go for direct measurement it may not always be possible or even if it is possible it may be very inconvenient when the instrument measures the value of a condition the following functions may be performed by an instrument transmitting signaling registering indicating and recording accordingly you can say transmitting instrument signaling type of instrument registering instrument indicating type instrument and recording instrument what do you mean by transmitting or transmitting type of instruments here the instrument conveys information concerning the measured quantity over some distance to a remote point 
So, the instrument will measure the quantity and convey the information from one place to another. A homely example is, is the telephone. Signaling type of instrument. Here the instrument indicates the general value or range of values of its measured quantity. Some grosser scale indicates the general value of what it has measured. Registering type of instruments. The instrument merely indicates by numbers or some other symbols of discrete increments the value of some quantity. For example, a water meter which uses discrete numbers to indicate how much of water has been consumed. Indicating type of instruments. The instrument indicates the value of the measured quantity using a calibrated pointer and scale. You have seen this type of instruments in laboratory, say commonly used pressure gauge which uses a pointer and scale to indicate the value of the measured quantity which is pressure in case of a pressure gauge. And recording type, the instrument keeps a written record of measured quantity and usually it is recorded against time. So, all these functions transmitting, signaling, registering, indicating, recording all these functions may be found in an instrument in any combination. Now, let us come to an important concept called functional elements. It is a very useful concept to describe the operation of an instrument in a generalized way. An instrument consists of several elements. These elements perform prescribed functions in converting a quantity or condition which is measuring medium into a corresponding indication which we call measured value. If you examine various physical instruments with a view toward generalization, we may be able to identify a set of elements that are similar with regard to their function. We call these elements functional elements. So, what we mean is we have various instruments. Let us say we have various temperature measuring instruments, we have various pressure measuring instruments. Now, if we examine all these instruments and several other instruments very closely with a view towards generalization, we may be able to identify a set of elements that are similar with regard to their function. What I mean is, if I take let us say this is a temperature measuring instrument and this is a pressure measuring instruments. Perhaps I may be able to see an element here and similar element here which does similar job. So, in terms of function they are similar, we call these elements functional elements. So, we will define functional elements as if we examine various physical instruments with a view toward generalization, we may be able to identify a set of elements that are similar with regard to their function. We call these elements as functional elements. An instrument thus can be broken down to a limited number of functional elements and this gives us a way to treat the operation of an instrument in a generalized way. But the question now is how do I break down an instrument into 
its building blocks or into various functional elements. It can be done in a number of ways and looks like there is nothing like universally accepted generalized scheme. So, there are different schemes proposed in different books and you will see here at least two of them. Let us look at this scheme, which describes how you break down an instrument into various functional elements. You have a process or measured medium, which I am interested in measuring. I bring an instrument in contact with this. The instrument interacts with this measured medium and presents me what it has measured. Now, if I examine the instrument how it works or if I, if I am able to break down in instruments into various parts which performs different functions, I can identify these elements. The first element is sensing element. Sensing element. The sensing element interacts with the process first. It produces an output which is related to process variable being measured. So, this is the element which first interacts with the measured medium. It receives signal from the measured medium which you call measurement and produces a signal which is related to the process variable that is being measured. An example can be a thermocouple, you know which thermocouple measures temperature, a thermocouple has two junctions, one is called measuring junction, another is called cold junction, we will talk about thermometer in detail later. So, the hot junction or the measuring junction is brought in contact with the medium whose temperature I am going to measure. So, depending on the temperature or the temperature difference that exists between the measuring medium and the cold junction, thermocouple produces an EMF as output. So, thermocouple it produces EMF which is in the range of millivolt, it depends on temperature. So, the output signal of the sensing element is related to the process variable that is being measured. For thermocouple, its temperature here is millivolt here. Similarly, strain gauge where a resistance depends on the mechanical strain. So, if a resistance, if a, res, if a strain gauge is strained differently, its resistance will change differently. Okay. The next element in line is signal conditioning element. The signal conditioning element will convert the output signal of the sensing element to a form or to a signal which is more suitable for further processing. So, it conditions the signal that comes out of sensing element. So, it converts the output signal of the sensing element to another signal which is more suitable for further processing. It may be a DC voltage or current. 
it is required when the output signal of the sensing element is not in a form which is more suitable, which is suitable for further processing. Say the output of the primary signal is a displacement signal and you may be interested in converting it to an electrical signal which can be processed much more easily. So, you need a signal conditioning element which will convert the displacement signal to an electrical signal. Examples may be amplifier which will convert millivolts to volts, an oscillator which converts an impedance change into a variable frequency voltage. The output of the signal conditioning element goes to signal processing element. A signal processing element converts the output signal from the signal conditioning element to a form which is more suitable for presentation, for presentation to the observer. It may be an analog to digital converter. An analog to, di analog to digital converter will convert voltage signal into a digital form for input to a computer. It can also be a microcomputer which calculates measured value of these of the variable from incoming digital data. And finally, we have data presentation element. The data presentation element presents the data to the observer and it has to be in a form which the observer can recognize. So, the data presentation element presents the data to the observer in a recognizable form. Examples are pointer and scale, a chart recorder or a visual display unit. So, in this scheme, we identify four functional elements. First is sensing element, which first receives information about the measured medium and produces an output which is some way related to the variable we are going to measure. Second in the line is signal conditioning element, which will change the output signal of the sensing element to a form which is more suitable for processing. Next is signal processing element, which will convert the output signal of the signal conditioning element to a signal which is more suitable for the purpose of presentation and the data presentation element will present this signal to the observer in a recognizable form. Let us discuss another scheme as proposed by Doeblin. We have a process of measured medium as before. Again, consider it a liquid whose temperature I am going to measure. So, I bring a temperature measurement measuring instrument in contact with this measured medium and analyze how the instrument works. I may be able to identify these functional elements. The first block is primary sensing element. The primary sensing element, the primary sensing element is that which first receives energy from the measured medium and produces an output depending in some way on the measured quantity. 
So this is same as what you saw in the scheme one. We call sensing element there. Let's call primary sensing element here because you can have if you have more than if you have more than two sensing element and the one that interacts with the system first may be called primary sensing element. So this is the element which first receives information from the measured medium and produces an output depending on some way on the measured quantity. If we, if we take the temperature measurement as an example, the primary sensing element will first extract some amount of thermal energy from the measuring medium. So, immediately we know that we are disturbing the system that we are going to measure because it is, ex it is extracting some amount of thermal energy from the system and that is necessary for the act of measurement which makes perfect measurement extremely difficult or theoretically impossible. This is called loading effect. The amount of energy that is necessary for the purpose of measurement is called loading effect. So, a good instrument will receive very minimum energy from the measuring medium for the purpose of measurement. So, a good instrument will have minimum loading effect. So, the next is variable conversion element. The output signal of the primary sensing element is some physical variable such as displacement or voltage. Say if you are using thermocouple as a temperature measuring instrument, the output signal of the primary sensing element will be a millivolt signal. For the instrument to perform the desired function, it may be necessary to convert this variable into another more suitable variable while preserving the information content of the original signal. And variable conversion element will do this function. So, the variable conversion element will convert the physical nature of the signal that comes out of the primary, sig primary sensing element to another signal which is more suitable for the purpose of measurement. It may be noted here that all instruments may not have variable conversion element. Some instrument may have more than one variable conversion element. Next in the line is variable manipulation element. In performing the measurement, an instrument may require that a signal represented by some physical variable be manipulated in some way. That is, we may be interested in changing the numerical value of the signal while preserving the physical nature of the variable. For example, an electronic amplifier accepts a small voltage signal as input and produces an output signal that is also voltage, but is some constant times the input. So, variable manipulation element will manipulate the signal that comes out of variable conversion element. By manipulation, we essentially mean changing the magnitude of the signal. Unlike variable conversion element, it will not change the physical nature of the signal. For example, an amplifier will change the millivolt signal to voltage signal. It may also be noted here 
that it is not necessary that variable manipulation element will always follow the variable conversion element. It may be present before this block or it may be present elsewhere in the diagram or it may not be present at all. Next is data transmission element. As the name suggests, data transmission element transmits the data. When functional elements are actually physically separated, then it becomes necessary to transmit the data from one place to another. And the data transmission element will transmit the data from one place to another. The data transmission element may be as simple as a shaft and bearing assembly or it may be as complicated as a telemetry system for transmitting signals from satellites to ground equipment by radio. And finally, we have data presentation element. The data presentation element communicates information about the measured quantity to the observer for monitoring or control purpose. And as we have said earlier, the data must be communicated such that it is recognizable by human sense organ. The common examples are pointer moving on a scale is a data presentation element, recording using a pen moving over a chair is another data presentation element. Finally, we may also have a data storage or playback element which will store data which can be restored later whenever it is required. Examples may be a computer, a magnetic tape recorder, etc. So, this block diagram tells us all the possible functional elements that you can present in an instrument. I repeat again that it is not necessary the functional elements will be present strictly in this in this order in any instrument. And also it is not necessary that there will be only one variable conversion element or there will be only one variable manipulation element. So, there may be more than one variable conversion element or there will be there may be more than one variable manipulation element and that may be they may be present anywhere in the chain. But we can describe the operation of any instrument in terms of these functional elements. So, let us summarize what we did today.
we define the module object detail module content then we started with general principles of measuring systems where you give a brief discussion on why we measure, its purpose of measurement, types of applications of measurement. We talked about direct indirect measurements, we stress that direct measurement is always preferred, but it may not be possible always. Then we talked about different functions that instrument perform and finally, we talked about functional elements. Where we defined what functional elements are and what are the various schemes available which will allow us to break down an instrument into various functional elements. In the next class, we will take an example and try to identify the functional elements that are present in that instrument.